Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's project I'm going to be doing some wood turning. I have a piece of apple wood on the lathe ready to go. Uh, don't know what I'm going to be making yet, either it's going to be a little bowl or uh, a lidded pot or something like that, but you'll know because you'll see the title. Um, I'm also going to be doing something new for, at least for me, is I'm going to be doing some coloring of the wood. I've been watching some videos on some different techniques and different mediums on using uh, to color the wood. So I've got an assortment of things like dyes, um, acrylic paints, airbrush paints, some metallic paints and stuff like that, uh, even some India ink. So uh, like I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing yet. We'll see when I start turning it and see what happens. Before we get on to that, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, one is a great big shout out to all the subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to me. I really appreciate it. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. Also, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button hit the um, notification so you know when I have new videos coming. Also, uh, leave me some comments. I really appreciate the comments. I love hearing from you. I also wanted to mention a great big shout out to a fellow YouTuber and wood turner, woodworker, who lives not too far away from me in Canada. Uh, his name is Gord Rock. Uh, really good guy. Uh, does some excellent videos. Uh, thank you very much, Gord, uh, because you did a great big shout out for me, and I really appreciate that, so that's why I wanted to do a shout out for you. So I will also post Gord's link down below. Go check him out. He does some excellent videos. Okay, so I have this on a 3-inch faceplate. Tailstock is up. Everything is secure, nice and tight. Um, everything clears. Okay, I'm going to refine this shape just a little bit more and smooth this out. You know, when I started this out, I was envisioning a small bowl that was kind of rounded and about that big. But now that I look at this, you know, you kind of just change your mind. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to round this out here a little bit more from about here. And then come in about here and scoop this out and turn this into a vase and kind of scoop this around, contour it and come back out around here or here. a couple of problems. Uh, one had a couple of camera issues which a couple of the cameras weren't actually recording and um, two, the, I threw the blank a little bit off center with a catch and managed to put a little bit of a big gouge in the bottom and then I was looking at it after I turned it off and I really wasn't liking the design change that I made 
So I'm going to go to a different design and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, what I'm going to do is, this is where I had the catch, so I have to turn that away a little bit. I'm going to flatten this bottom a little bit more and keep the shape like this. And then I think I'm going to part it off about right here. And I'm going to keep this top part for the lid. That's more along the lines of the shape that I want, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so what I've decided now is I'm coming in about this far, which is about 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom. And then from this line here back, about another 5 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to cut it off right here. This will be the top from this line up will be the top. And this will be the lid, which I'll have enough to... Um, it won't cover the very top, it will cover kind of inside. So I'll have enough there. Okay, so now I'm just going to find the center and clean off the bottom a little bit and then put a mortise in there. So that is deep enough for the jaws to grab on with that little bit of a dovetail in there. Alright, well my camera quit on me again just as I was putting those lines in. I widened them just a little bit more. And I'm happy with that, so now I'm going to go and sand all of this up to 400 grit, but I'm not going to bore you with the sanding, so I'll come back when that's done. Alright, I've got this all sanded down to 400 grit, but before I go any further, I'm just going to make a little indent right here for my button. Okay, now I'm going to clean this off with some paper towel and um, then I'm going to start applying some ink to the bottom. 
I'm going to put Black India ink on here and on here. But first I'm going to put it on here and then the red in here. And I might put that gold metallic paint in the middle. And before I put any ink on, I'm going to put some masking tape around this edge. Just going to use a clean paper towel and apply it. Now while that's drying, I'm just going to take the skew chisel and just clean up this edge right here from any overrun of the ink. So I'm going to hit this with some steel wool, take the tape off and see what it looks like. Still a little rough around the edge, so I'm going to put some tape back on and I'm going to redo that edge. Alright, let that dry again. Be back in a couple minutes. Okay, well that bled over just a little bit. But I can either sand that off or um, use the diamond tip chisel or the spindle gouge. So I'm going to try sandpaper first. Okay, I still have a little bit more to do in there. So I'm just going to take a brush and just while it's running, I'm going to apply it right here. Very gently. Alright, I'm going to part this off and I'm going to glue my button on the bottom and finish the bottom a little bit and turn it around. I decided before I parted this off that I'm going to try putting some of the gold paint on a on the waste part here and some of the red dye and it's turning out pretty good. The dye is not bleeding into the gold. Now that I have this turned over I'm going to just round this end over to match the back. So I'm going to set the distance inside on the lid. Uh, I was thinking about the same distance down, but that's a little bit too much. So I think I'll go right about 
there. I'm going to drill this out now and I put a mark on a piece of tape so that uh, I know how deep I'm going to go. I'm going to go about to this line right here and then I can clean it up after. So now I'm going to clean this up and core out the inside a little bit more and clean up the bottom. this wall just a little bit thinner right here and then hollow it out some more because I want this lip for the lid to sit on. I've sanded the inside to 400. It's all cleaned out now and the walls are nice and smooth so I'm going to put a coat of sanding sealer on it and uh, let that dry and then I'm going to hit it with some steel wool and finish the inside. Okay I'm going to start putting the black ink on the other side of the of this. Just apply a liberal amount of it. Same as I did on the back side. Or I should say the bottom. Well, I forgot to put the tape on and got a black spot there. So I'm going to have to sand that off. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then come back and do a second coat. Okay, I'm going to let that dry again. Okay, I'm going to hit the outside here with some steel wool and the inside with steel wool. the tool rest up here just so I can steady my hand as I'm going to put the gold paint on Just put it on very carefully. All right, I masked off the black areas. Even though it's uh, waterproof ink, I'm just not going to try and get any on there. I'm not too worried about the acrylic paint. It shouldn't uh, affect that. And this is Cherry Red Rit Dye. 
I mixed it about one part of writ dye to about one and a half parts of water and I'm just going to apply it with a piece of rag. And I have the bed, or I have the head swung over off the bed so I don't drip anything on the bed. On the test piece, I just rub some on and then kind of let it dry and then rub some more on to make it a little bit darker. Because I'm definitely going to be wanting it darker than what it is right now. Just going to keep on rubbing more and more of this on. And see how it looks until I achieve the color that I want. I think I'll even try turning it on and see what happens. Well, some of the tape decided to come off. That's actually looking really nice. I'm liking that, but I'd like it a little bit darker yet. Turning it on just kind of blended it all in. Yeah. That's actually really nice. I'm really liking that. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then come back with a second coat. Yeah, it's getting a little bit darker. You can really see the grain on there too. That looks really nice. Okay, so I let that dry and I put a few more coats of the dye on here and made it a little bit darker. I just strengthened the dye a little bit more, put a few more coats, let it dry, took some steel wool and buffed it to take the, the grain back down because it's water-based so it raises the grain. So now I'm going to just wipe it down with a piece of paper towel and then put some sanding sealer on it. And that tends to take off a little bit of of the dye from the surface as well. And I'm going to rub just the red part with the sanding sealer for now. Because it's picking up the dye. black part. 
and that's also picking up some of the ink. And I don't want to spread this on the red part. going to put some friction polish on it now. Rub that in, let it dry for a little bit. It's still bleeding a little bit, so I'm just going to rub the center. Okay, now I'm going to buff it, but I'm going to buff the red separately from the black. I let that get really nice and hot and it polishes up really nice. I'm really happy with that. Okay, I've got the other half of the blank mounted in the chuck and I have three lines set here. One is going to be for a mortise that I can flip it around on the chuck. The other line is for the inside part of the lid fitting into the pot and the other line is for the outside of the lid. A good fit. I don't want a tight fit. Just enough so it drops onto it. Okay, I'm going to make the lid domed at about this point and I'm going to remove most of this right here and then also shape a little bit of a handle on the top of the lid.
Okay, so I've sanded this all the way down to 400 grit, and I'm going to do a little bit different approach to the coloring. I'm going to apply the red first and put it on everything, and do several coats of that, and then I'm going to do the black and then do the gold. And I've also not put any sanding sealer on this yet, because I want this to soak right in. Alright, I'm going to let that dry naturally and then I'm going to be back to do the black. Okay, I put the sanding sealer on, and now I'm going to put the friction polish, and it's done. Wow, that looks really good. I am so happy with that. So this is it finished. I'm really amazed the way it turned out, like the colors on it just came out beautifully. That red is just awesome. Like you can see the grain through there and that friction polish just made everything pop. It's standing about 5 inches tall by about 3.5 inches wide which is about 125 millimeters by 88 millimeters give or take. Um, yeah, everything just turned out beautifully on this. Um, in hindsight, I probably would have done the colors a little bit different, the way I applied them. Um, I would have done it more like I did the top. Put the red on first, then the black, and then the gold. Uh, the gold was a little tedious in putting it on, um, just the way the paint was. Maybe in the future if I can find a way of thinning it out, um, applying it a little bit differently, I would have. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't airbrush the gold on because it was just too thick. It just clogged up the airbrush. And I've tried that. So, yeah, unfortunately I couldn't do that. So, anyways, uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification button for when I do another video. Uh, follow me on social media. All my links will be posted below for all that. And uh, also I will post the link for this on my Etsy store for anyone who is interested in purchasing it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, come back for more. So thanks for watching. Take care.